Three bells must be three o'clock Eastern time. That means it's noon here, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. This is season four, episode seven, number 92. I'm Tom Betts, your host. Today, I think we've got a pretty interesting uh, episode for you. We're going to talk about the history of the Spaghetti Westerns, and today's film is Massacre at the Grand Canyon. And we're going to talk a little bit about whatever became of Gilbert Rowland, one of uh, my favorite actors of all time. Then we'll talk about who are those guys, the Fantasia Brothers. Uh, film of the week is The Hills Run Red. Got an autograph, a book, some a rare CD. And then we'll wrap things up with some posters and the week of the weekly news. So let's get going. Uh, History of the Spaghetti Westerns is The Massacre at the Grand Canyon. This is a pre-fistful of dollars Western. It's a uh, Italian film. Italian title is Massacro al Grande Canyon, also called as E. Pascoli Rossi. English titles are Red Pastures, Grand Canyon Massacre, Massacre at Canyon Grande, Massacre at Grand Canyon, and most of us know it as the Massacre at Grand Canyon. Uh, this one's a rare. I don't think you're going to find it any place on YouTube, video, DVD, maybe maybe eBay. Anyways, it's a 63 Italian production produced by Ultra Cinemagrafica and Pro di Cinemagrafica out of Rome. Producer is Danilo Marciani. Director is Stanley Corbett, who in reality is Sergio Carbucci. And Albert Band. Uh, Albert Band is his real name. Uh, don't be fooled by aliases that they try and cover him up with. A uh, story is by Edward C. Geltman. Story, uh, story, a screenplay is by both Corbett, which is Corbucci, and Band. Cinematography is by Enzo Barboni. It's an Eastman color in widescreen in Enzo Barboni. This is before he became the director of the Trinity Films. Music is by Johnny Fario, and the song The Cowboy Song is sung by Rod Dana. Rod's real name is Roger Frank, F-R-A-N-C-K-E. Uh, main starring actors in this one are Wes Evans, is played by James Mitchum. Nancy Dancer is played by Jill Powers. Tully, or Rudy Dancer, is played by Georgie, George Artisan. Bear Mason is played by Bert Nelson. Eric Dancer is played by Edward Cianelli. And Sheriff Bert Conley is played by G.R. Stewart. Other names you might recognize in the cast are Clay Dancer, played by Andrea Giordana. And we have the Whitmore, a Whitmore henchman, played by Nito Stefanelli. Master of Arms is also by Nito Stefanelli. Story goes is after two years on the trail, Wes Evans, played by James Mitchum, returns to his hometown after avenging the murder of his father. He finds things have changed while he's been away and is placed between between the crossfire of two rival gangs who vie for the possession of some disputed land. After various events and gunfights, the bandits are routed, and Wes can finally join up with the girl he's always loved, uh, which is, uh, what's what we call her in this, Nancy Dancer, played by Jill Powers. Anyways, this was filmed in Grabnico, Polje, Croatia, and Trieste, Italy. You'll recognize the white rocks in this, uh, there we go, which is filmed in Croatia, where most of the uh, Winnetou films are filmed. This is much like an American Western with land rights, the main focus over gunplay. Typically, a man leaves town for extended time and loses his girl to his rival, finds her married when he returns, when she believes her lover has died. A disabled elderly father pulls out all the stops to accomplish his goal of controlling the entire valley. Tully, his greedy, greedy son, is more than willing to carry out his father's best wishes because he wants to take over via force and brings trouble with other ranchers upon the family. 
Our hero, Wes Evans, tries to play peacemaker with the help of the local sheriff, uh, which is Stuart, Giacomo Rossi Stuart, who tries to give his friend Evans his job back, but Evans refuses. At the climax of the film, the dancer ranch hands confront the other ranchers in Canyon, Canyon Grande, and all out shootout ensues. Camera shots bounce back and forth and the bodies pile up, but it's all so confusing. Trying to figure out who's who in the pile of the dead men. Meanwhile, back at the jail, Wes and the sheriff are pinned down. Sheriff Cooley, with a gun in each hand, begins firing alternately, but is killed by the mob. Wes mourns the death of his friend and the only good man in town. Wes and Tully then meet in the canyon with a duel on horseback with Wes the victor. When only Tully is forced to face the ranchers with his youngest son, Giordana, able to lynch, Wes rides in with Tully's body, and the old man is escorted back to the house by his now freed son. Beaten, the senior dancer concedes his defeat. There's two battles in the canyon during this film, and some of the same footage is used in both skirmishes. The score by Ferio is subpar compared to his later works. Uh, in actor profiles, we have Wes Evans, played by James Mitchum. Real name is Joshua Mitchum, born on May 8, 1941. We covered him in episode 85, so we want to refer back to that episode to learn more about Jim Mitchum. Nancy Drive Dancer is played by Jill Powers. She's an alias for Gabriella Pallotta, who was born in Rome on October 16, 1938. She's a musician, piano player, film and TV, TV actress, sometimes billed as Gabby Pallotta. She made 30 film and TV appearances between 1956 and 1977. She appeared in John Huston's The Bible in 1966 as Ham's wife. This is her only spaghetti western. A telly dancer, a ruddy dancer, played by George Artisan. George Artisan was born on December 13, 1931. He died in December 11, 2014, and we covered him in episode 88. Bear Mason is paid by, played by Burke Nelson. Burke Merriam is his real name, and he was born in Brooklyn, New York. New York on June 19, 1932. He made 20 film and TV appearances between 1957 and 1988. In 1966, he introduced bodybuilder Reg Lewis to the Rome Studios when he arrived from England. This is Burt's only spaghetti western. He died in San Diego, California on June 18, 1998 at the age of 65. Eric Dancer was played by Edward Cianelli. Eduardo Cianelli was born in Ischia, Naples, Italy on June 30th, 1889. He once studied to be a surgeon, but his love for opera won out and he became an opera singer. He came to New York City in 1914 and appeared on Broadway before going to Hollywood where he specialized in gangster roles and appeared in over 150 films and TV shows. In the 1960s, he returned to Rome where he died of cancer on October 8, 1969. His only other spaghetti western was as Commissioner Boone in 1969's Boot Hill with Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill. His sons are, sons are Louis E. Cianelli, a producer, and writer and actor Edward Cianelli, Jr. Sheriff Bert Cooley, played by G.R. Stewart, is Giacomi Rossi Stewart, Born August 25th, 1925, he died on October 24th, 1994, and we covered his career in episode 86. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite actors of all time, whatever became of Gilbert Rowland. Okay, Luis Antonio Damaso de Alonso was born in Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico on December 11, 1905. His father and grandfather were, bo were bullfighters and he intended to follow in their footsteps. When Pancho Villa took control of their town, Roland and his family fled to the United States. He lived in Texas until at age 14, he hopped a freight train and went to Hollywood. 
After arriving there, he found menial jobs and slept in the Catholic Church. He often lost those jobs because he spent time working as an extra in films. He chose his screen name by combining the names of his favorite actors, John Gilbert and Ruth Rowland. He was often cast in the stereotypical Latin lover role. His younger brother was producer, production manager, director, assistant director, and actor Francisco Day, born in 1907. He died in 1995. Roland's first film contract was with Paramount, and his first major film role was in the comedy The Plastic Age in 1925, together with Clara Bow, to whom he became engaged. In 1926, he played Armand and Camille opposite Norma Talmadge, with whom he was romantically involved, and they starred together in several productions. With the advent of sound films, Roland frequently appeared in Spanish-language adaptations of American films in romantic leads. In 1933, Gilbert Roland played a large supporting role in She Done Him Wrong with Cary Grant and starring Mae West. During World War II, Roland served in the U.S. Army. After the war, he appeared in a series of films in the mid-1940s as the popular character, The Cisco Kid. By the 1950s, he was co-starring in major films such as The Tall Men with Burt Lancaster in 1951, Thunder Bay with Jimmy Stewart in 1953, Bandito with Robert Mitchum in 56, and Cheyenne Autumn with Richard Widmark in 1964, where he was nominated for a Golden Globe. Roland's career in Euro Westerns goes all the way back to 1931 with Monsieur Le Fox, a Spanish version of Men of the North, made by MGM and directed by Hal Roach. This Spanish version was released in Europe, and he was billed under the alias Louis Alonso. Roland co-starred in five spaghetti westerns that he made in the 1960s. In the 1970s and 1980s, he appeared in such films as Islands in the Stream, 1970, with George C. Scott, Cabo Blanco with James Bronson, and his final film, Barbarossa, 1982, with Willie Nelson and Gary Busey. This film is a must-see. Roland was married twice, first to actress Constance Bennett from 1941 to 1945, and they had two children, Gil, or Jill, and Lorinda, who followed his footsteps and worked in the film industry as actress and in the art department. After he divorced, divorced Bennett, he married Guillermo Cantu in 1954, and they remained married until his death in Hollywood on May 15, 1994, from cancer. Roland's career had spanned six decades. The coming of sound had not ended it. He played in all kinds of movies. He had held the most beautiful women in his arms, and maybe the most important thing, he had been given the opportunity to show his acting skills. Not even, not every actor can boast such a lifetime achievement. As far as I'm concerned, like Eli Wallach, he stole every scene he was ever in. Some of the most popular, or Gilbert Rowland's uh, westerns were Monsieur Le Fox in 1930 as Louis Le Bay under the alias Luis Alonso. Any Gun Can Play in 1967 is Montero. The Ruthless Four in 67 is Mason. The Wild and the Dirty in 67 is Horse or Dazio. Between God, the Devil, and a Winchester in 1968 as Juan Jesquito or Jesquito. And Sonora in 1968 as Kirchner. Okay, let's move on to who are those guys, and we're going to talk about the Fantasia brothers. Ah. Okay, the Fantasia brothers consist of Andrea Fantasia who was born sometime most likely in the early 1920s. We don't have a specific date, and I cannot find one. He worked in many facets of the film industry, a producer, production manager, and assistant director. He and his brother, Franco, which I'll cover later, attended the Rome Stunt School in the mid-1950s. Andrea became a swordmaster, stuntman, and actor. Because of his skills, he began his film career in 1955's film, Il Matello Rosso, 
directed by Giuseppe Scotesi and starring Fausto Tozzi and Patricia Medina. Most of the films he appeared in during the 1950s were sword and sandal films, including Hercules in 58, The Centur Centurion, and Hercules, Samson, and Ulysses in 1963. When the pepul peplum genre uh, faded, he automatically became a supporting actor in spaghetti westerns, where he appeared in 15 of them, usually as military men, town officials, and ranch owners. His last film appearance was as a train man at the, or as a man at the train station in From Corleone to Brooklyn in 1979, directed by Umberto Lenzi and starring Mauricio Merli. Andrea died in Rome on November 2nd, 1985. Some of his better, best known spaghetti westerns are Buffalo Bill, Hero of the Far West in 64 as a sergeant. Face to Face in 67 as a council chairman. Wanted 67, Amos Sutton. Blood Calls to Blood in 68 as Remendado. The Long Day of the Massacre in 68 as a judge. Fistful of Lead in 70 as Montes Henchman. And his final film, White Fang and the Hunter. He was a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Captain. Then we go to his younger brother, Fantake. Francesco Fantasia, who was born in Rhodes, Italy on March 5, 1924. The younger brother of Andrea, and like his brother, worked behind the scenes as a production manager, assistant director, stunt coordinator, and sword master. In front of the camera, he was a stuntman, film, and TV actor. He was sometimes billed as Frank Farrow and Frank Fontana. His career began earlier than, than Andreas with his first appearance in 1951's the Black Captain, starring Marina Berti. He would go on to appear in over 150 films and TV shows, 22 of which were Westerns. Franco died in Rome on November 10, 2002. He was 78 years old. Amazing that these guys appeared in so many films, and yet there was so little known about them. Some of Franco's more important films and best known are Buffalo Bill, Hero of the Far West, in 64 where he appeared as George under the alias Frank Farrow. Uh, Blood for a Silver Dollar, 65, he played Sheriff George Anderson, again as Frank Farrow. In 68, he appeared in The Long Day of the Massacre as Clay. Also in 68, he appeared in A Long Ride from Hell as Castleman. 70, he played in Adios Sabata in probably his most well-known ro role as Senor Ocaño. 71, he appeared in The Ballad of Ben and Charlie as Sheriff Robbins. 72, he appeared in The Grand Duel as a bounty killer. 77, he appeared in California as an Army recruiting officer. And his last spaghetti western, Buck at the Edge, Edge of Heaven in 1991, as Andre Saval, again under the alias Frank Farrell. The two brothers often appear together in spaghetti westerns such as Buffalo Bill, Hero of the Far West, Blood Calls to Blood, The Long Day of the Massacre, The Nephews of Zorro, Fistful of Lead, and The Son of Zorro. Okay, let's move on to the film of the week. Okay, for the film of the week, we have a fan favorite, The Hills Run Red. Uh, this is an Italian-Spanish co-production by Dino De Laurento Cinemagrafica in Rome and CB Films out of Barcelona. Italian title is Un Fiume di Dolari. Spanish title is Sangre in Las Colinas. Also, Un Rio de Dolares. Uh, USA titles are A River of Dollars and The Hills Run Red. Producers are Luigi Carpentieri and Ermano Donati, directed by Lee W. Beaver. Real name is Carlo Lozani. Cinematography is by Tino Secchi. Real name is Antonio Secchi. Technicolor and Technoscope. Story and screenplay by Dean Craig. Dean is an alias by Piero Regnoli. Music is by Leo Nichols. That's uh, Leo Nichols is in the alias for Ennio Morricone. There's two songs in this one, Un Fiumi di Dolari, sung by Gianni Spagnuolo, 
and Home to My Love, sung by Gino. Real name is Gregor Gregorino Cudsey. Leading actors are Jerry Brewster and Jim Houston, played by Thomas Hunter. Garcia Mendez, played by Henry Silva. Colonel Winnie Getz, played by Dan Durier. Ken Siegel, slash Ken Milton, Milton, played by Nando Gazzolo. And Mary Ann Siegel, slash Milton, Nicoletta Machiavelli. And Tim Brewster, played by Loris Lodi, or Lottie, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Other familiar names are Vittorio Bonos as a gambler. And then we have a union colonel, played by Goffredo Unger. And Pedro, played by Guglielmi Spolatini. Mendez Henchman, you'll recognize Osiridio Pevarelli and Renzo Pevarello. Anna Pion, a Forcio Ore For Fortunato Areno. Story goes, two Confederate soldiers, Jerry Brewster, played by Thomas Hunter, and Ken Siegel, played by Nando Gazzalo, swipe an army payroll and try to escape after the war has ended. Brewster plays decoy while Siegel flees with the loot. Brewster is captured and sentenced to five years in prison. After he has served his sentence, he returns home to discover that his friend Ken Siegel has broken his word and is responsible for his wife's death. Jerry wants revenge, but Siegel has, has become wealthy and powerful, and his henchmen, led by Mendoza, played by Henry Silva, are already waiting for the Avenger. This is a takeoff on One-Eyed Jacks, spaghetti western style. Thomas Hunter plays the Marlon Brando role, while Nando Gazzolo takes the Carl, Mar Carl Malden part. Insert a maniacal henchman played by Henry Silva, a young boy, boy played by Loris Lodi, and a veteran lawman played by Dan Durier, sent to observe in hopes of finding the stolen bank money. And you have a well-defined story with plenty of action, nice acting and direction, and a great but often overlooked score by Ennio Morricone. Some of the acting goes over the top with Silva and Hunter trying to outdo each other with hysterical lines and cries. Nicoletta Machiavelli is around for window dressing and like Loris Lodi's character is unaware of what has happened beforehand or the relationship between Brewster and Seagal slash Milton. Morricone's score is right on and more melancholy than many of his other more flamboyant and themes, but fills the film with not getting too sentimental. Rumor has it that Burt Reynolds was to play the Jerry Brewster role after Navajo Joe. In one scene, Dad, Dan Durier is shooting from the roof of the Austin Chronicle building. There really was an Austin Chronicle newspaper in Austin, Texas. If you haven't seen this film, find it. If you have seen it, watch it again. DVDs are available in the U.S., U.K., Germany, Japan, Australia, and Spain. Blu-rays are available in the U.S.A., Germany, and Australia. Check the Spaghetti Western database for more information. As far as actor profiles are concerned, Jerry Brewster slash Jim Houston is played by Thomas Hunter. Thomas O'Driscoll Hunter born in 1932, died in 2017, was covered in episode 82. Garcia Mendez was played by Henry Silva. Henry Silva was born in Brooklyn, New York on September 15, 1928. He was a graduate of the Actors Studio. In Hollywood, he became a prolific character actor and was a regular staple of international genre cinema, usually playing criminals or gangsters. Notable film appearances include Ocean's Eleven in 1960, The Manchurian Candidate, 1962, Johnny Cool in 1963, Sharky's Machine in 1981, and Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai in 1999. His other European Westerns include White Fang and to the Rescue in 1974 and Manhunt in 1984. Henry's still with us. Colonel Winnie Getz was played by Dan Durier. Daniel Durier was born in White Plains, New York on January 23, 1907. He was first a stage actor and then appeared in his first film in 1934. He would have a 40-year career playing both leading roles and supporting roles, both as heroes, but best remembered 
as a villain in over 110 roles. Hills Run Red is his only spaghetti western. He died in Hollywood, California on June 7, 1968 at the age of 61. For some reason, he seemed much older. Ken Siegel, or Ken Milton, was played by Nando Gazzolo. Gazzolo was born in Savannah, de Giuria, Italy, on October 16, 1928. He debuted in radio in 1948 and then worked on stage before coming, becoming a voice dubber, which eventually led to a film career beginning in 1956. He'd go on to appear in over 75 films and TV shows. He appeared in only four spaghetti westerns, two of them which were TV films. Gazzolo died on November 16, 2015 in Nepe, Lazio, Italy, at the age of 87. Uh, last, we have Mary Ann Siegel, or Milton, played by Nicoletta Machiavelli, born Nicoletta Rangioni Machiavelli, born in 1944. She died in 2015, and we covered her in episode 86. Okay, now we'll move on to autograph of the week. Okay, autograph of the week is our good friend Mike Morolf. If you've been to any film festivals, Mike is usually there. Uh, Mike was seen mostly in Mexican westerns and Mexican USA co-productions. He was in Garden of Venus in 1979, and he was also in Triumphs of a Man Called Horse in 1982. I remember him best of all from Desperado. And you'll see him there as one of the gang members. Okay, let's move on to Book of the Week. Okay, this is a Italian reference book I use quite a bit. It is in English. Italian film, A Who's Who by John Stewart. It's from McFarland Press. It was released in 1994. It is in English. It has 812 pages, no pictures, just a complete reference book of actors' names with their credits. Uh, it's indispensable because it lists a lot of pre-1950s, uh, 1940s actors that you won't find any place else, not even on IMDb. A lot of information on births and deaths and a list of their films in Italian or English, whichever they were released in. Okay. Now let's move on to CD of the week. Okay, I've got a couple of CDs. I'll show you a picture of how they were released originally in 1994 out of Brazil. And uh, Brazil is huge fans of spaghetti westerns. They've uh, they also have made their own westerns, which are confusing, because a lot of times you think they are Italian made or co-productions with Spain, but they're Brazilian westerns. So hats off to the Brazilian fans that we have. But anyways, I have a couple of O Melhor do Bang Bang Italiana. These are compilation CDs. Uh, they're compilations a lot of times of vocals and our 45 rpms from italian westerns and they were there's three releases of these maybe more that i'm not familiar with these are cdrs so i don't have a complete listing of the uh, tracks on them but you can find the original copy at discogs d-i-s-c-o-g-s -S -S. Uh, they're pretty cheap they're under 10 bucks and if you want pick up a copy there they're great listening okay now let's move on to some uh, posters okay we're going to show you some posters from the hills red run red this is the american ad mat again we've shown these almost every time we've been here pictures that they used to cut out and put in newspapers for advertising purposes also have a Scandinavian 
press release. Used to give you these when they went to the theater. Short storyline, pictures, cast members. Uh, these are great. Wish we had them here in the States. And last but not least, Belgium copy of the Hills Run Red. Basically a copy of the U.S. Uh, release poster. Okay, now we'll wrap things up with the weekly news. Okay, weekly news. We're getting into August, so we have very little. Most of the Europeans take the month off, so there's very little news to report about. In this week's news, we only have a new DVD release, but it's a good one. It's Compañeros, directed by Sergio Corbucci, starring Tomas Milian and Franco Nero. It was released July 22nd on Dynit, D-Y-N-I-T. It's in Italian, and we have really no more information about it, so I don't know if there's any extras, if there's subtitles, or what the uh, running time is. But anyways, that's all I've got this week in weekly news. Want to make sure that you people remember to, to join Jay Jennings and uh, see Courtney Joyner tomorrow on Professor Lampini's Podcast of Horrors. It's a new time. It's at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So join Jay and see Courtney tomorrow. A lot of fun. Uh, it runs every other week. Uh, the week previous, it ran for three hours. So grab a bite to eat and a drink. Sit back and relax. Have a good time. In the meantime, this has been a Roberto Genesi production. And we'll see you all next week for another episode. Until then, adios, amigos.